Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Nesson Studios. Michaela Vernava here along with Marcus Omard. We have just watched France defeat Croatia in the World Cup final. They won 4-2. to two. They were ahead 4-1 to one at one point briefly in the game. Marcus, I'm curious how they were able to get such a jump on Croatia when we've seen both these countries play such tight matches throughout the tournament. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it was execution at key moments. Uh, Croatia actually dominated possession, outpassed France, spent a lot of time in France's half, but there were times there was a uh, set piece in the first half which led to an own goal, a uh, controversial uh, VAR, inspired, that's the video review inspired goal uh, just before halftime. So during these key moments in the game and then in the second half you had these counter-attacking situations which France just lives for and they loved it and you know they've been, that's how they've been eating all tournament. Well they made the most of it twice in the second half. Uh, then there was one mistake where France's goalkeeper tried to do a little too much and paid the price for it. So. Yeah, by about, uh, with about 20 minutes to go in the game, you knew it was all over and uh, people were just going to start partying in and around France. Well, for Croatia, still a dream run in this World Cup and they'll certainly go home as heroes. What does this do for the country and its players, first of all? Well, for the players, I think it really validates a lot of their standing in the game. Uh, you've got guys like Luka Modric, who won the Golden Ball, Ivan Rakitic, Mario Mandzukic. These guys have been in and around major championship finals uh, at club level for the last few years. So those of us who follow the club game know these guys are great players, and they just showed it. Um, as for the country, it's an immense source of pride. Uh, Croatia only became independent in 1991. This is their fifth World Cup. They finished fourth in uh, 1998. This time they get all the way to the final. So, you know, for a country of 4.2 million, countries that small are not supposed to reach the World Cup final. And it shows the rest of the world that anything is possible if you put a team together and motivate them the right way. So certainly a huge accomplishment. But was there anything in the game that you can pinpoint that maybe if they had been able to do differently, this outcome could have been different for them? Uh, no, they would have had, France would have needed to make some mistakes. and. You know, the best part about this France team is that they were so well organized and well drilled, they just didn't make a lot of mistakes. And that's where uh, these major international tournaments have been heading in recent years, where it's not always the team that dominates or plays the best that ends up winning. It's the team that just grinds out a result, keeps their heads, makes the most of key situations, and just get to the next round, get to the next game, do what you have to do to win that game, instead of... Uh, playing in a way that maybe soccer fans will talk about 200 years from now. It's also tough when your opponent is playing lights out all three of France's stars and Antoine Griezmann, Kylian Mbappe and Paul Pogba all scoring on the way to France's victory. Griezmann, the oldest of those three, 27 years old. Do you see this as a springboard for him for a dominant era for France to come? Yeah, not just uh, not just Griezmann, but the ones you mentioned before. Uh, this France team, and I just wrote it at the end of our uh, live blog, this, I think, was just the dawn of a dynasty. Uh, half of this team, France was the second youngest team in the World Cup. Usually in previous World Cups, we've seen that the teams with uh, more experience and more savvy go on to win, but they have so many young players that are playing at such a high level uh, in their club careers, in their day jobs. When they come together, uh, everything just clicked. So. Yeah, I see uh, Euro 2020 is coming up uh, two years from now, World Cup 2022. France could be winning all of these uh, World Cups. They could win in 2022, 2026, maybe even 2030 uh, due to the age profile of a lot of players on this team. Crazy to think about the youth movement dynasty in France. You heard it here first from Marcus Omar. Marcus, thank you for the analysis. You're welcome. Keep it on Nesson.com for all your soccer news.